Titan, a deep-sea submersible carrying five people on a voyage to the century-old wreck of the Titanic, was found in pieces from a catastrophic implosion that killed everyone aboard, said the U.S. Coast Guard, ending a multinational five-day search for the vessel. In this video, we delve into the catastrophic event involving the Titan submersible, shedding light on the untold story that has remained hidden until now. What is OceanGate, the company behind the missing submersible on a Titanic expedition? OceanGate is a company that was founded in 2009 by Guillermo Sonline and Stockton Rush. Sonlin and Rush aim to create a fleet of commercial submersibles that could be leased by various organizations and individuals. Their goal was to make ocean exploration accessible to all of humanity. However, Sonlin left the company in 2013. Stockton Rush, one of the co-founders, had a background in aviation and space travel. He initially pursued a career as an astronaut, but shifted his focus to undersea exploration, investing his inheritance in tech companies, Rush built his fortune and became a longtime enthusiast of deep sea exploration. He attempted to purchase a submarine but found limited availability. As a result, he decided to build his own submarine from plans in 2006. Rush identified a business opportunity in the private ocean exploration market. He believed that the industry was hindered by the perception that submersibles were dangerous vehicles and by strict government regulations that impeded innovation. Rush thought there was untapped demand for underwater ocean tourism, which would support the development of advanced submersibles for commercial purposes like resource mining and disaster mitigation. Originally based in Seattle, OceanGate moved its operations to the Port of Everett in Everett, Washington, in 2015. However, following the incident involving the Titan submersible, the company closed its Everett office indefinitely. Overall, OceanGate was founded with the vision of expanding the possibilities of ocean exploration through innovative submersible technology and making it accessible to a wider range of individuals and organizations. OceanGate owned three submersibles. The Cyclops-1 and Titan submersibles were launched and recovered from a dry dock-like launch and recovery platform that could be towed behind a commercial vessel. Once the platform and submersible reach the target location, the platform's flotation tanks are flooded and it sinks below the surface turbulence to a depth 30 feet. The submersible then lifts off for its underwater mission. Upon the submersible's return to the platform, the flotation tanks are pumped out and the platform can be taken back into tow or brought aboard the host vessel. That allows OceanGate to use vessels without human-rated cranes. The platform is approximately 35 feet long and 15 feet wide and can lift up to 9,100 kg, 20,000 lb. It is based on a concept developed by the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory. Titan was the second submersible designed and built by OceanGate with an intended maximum depth of 4,000 m, 13,000 feet. It was the first completed crewed submersible that used a hull constructed of titanium and carbon fiber composite materials as most other human carrying. Submersibles are designed with an all-metal pressure vessel. Testing with dives to its maximum intended depth in 2018 and 2019, the original composite hull of Titan developed fatigue damage and was replaced by 2021. In that year, OceanGate began operating a tourist service to visit the wreck of the Titanic, completing several dives to the wreck site in both 2021 and 2022. On June 18, 2023, OceanGate lost contact with Titan during its first dive in 2023 to the Titanic. Loss of contact had occurred multiple times during previous tests and tour dives, so OceanGate did not alert authorities until the submersible was overdue for its return. A massive international search and rescue operation ensued and ended on June 22, when debris from Titan, which had been destroyed in a catastrophic implosion, was discovered close to the bow of Titanic. Design and Construction OceanGate began developing a composite carbon fiber and titanium hulled submersible in collaboration with the University of Washington's Applied Physics Lab, a PL, in 2013, tentatively named Cyclops II. The first titanium structural components were ordered in December 2016 from Titanium Fabrication Corps. TIFAB and OceanGate signed a contract with Spencer Composites in January 2017 for the carbon composite cylinder. Spencer previously had built the composite pressure hull for the single-person deep-flight challenger for Steve Fawcett to a design by Graham Hawks. 
Spencer Composites was given challenging performance targets for Cyclops 2 and provided six weeks to complete the design. In March 2018, Cyclops 2 was renamed to Titan. Ocean Gate promoted the Titan's carbon fiber construction with titanium end caps as lighter in weight and more efficient to mobilize than other deep diving submersibles on its website. It also said the vessel was designed to dive 4 kilometers, 2.4 miles, with a comfortable safety margin, according to court documents. Carbon composites have limited life when subject to excessive loads or poor design, which leads to stress concentrations, experts say. Titan was equipped with a real-time acoustic monitoring system, which OceanGate claimed could detect the onset of buckling in the carbon fiber hull prior to catastrophic failure. Rush held a patent on the system. Titan was controlled with a modified game controller, similar to Cyclops 1. Limitations The design of the Titan submersible had certain safety concerns. The occupants had no way to open the hatch from inside the vessel as it was closed and bolted from the outside. Furthermore, there was no onboard location system, and the support ship monitoring Titan's position would send text messages with distances and directions to the submersible. In March 2018, the Marine Technology Society's Committee on Manned Underwater Vehicles expressed concerns about the design of Titan in a private letter to Stockton Rush. They urged him to have the ship classed or certified by a ship classification society. The committee found the marketing claims of meeting or exceeding DNV standards to be misleading since OceanGate had no intentions of testing the vehicle with DNV. Although the letter was not sent, a conversation took place between the committee chair and Rush, where they agreed to disagree. OceanGate explained in a 2019 blog post why Titan was not classed. They argued that the focus of classification was solely on the physical state of the vessel, not its corporate actions. OceanGate believed that their commitment to maintaining high-level operational safety through a constant, committed effort and a focused corporate culture outweighed the need for classification. Journalist David Pogue's expedition aboard Titan in 2022 to view the Titanic, it was noted that the submersible did not have an emergency locator beacon. The surface support vessel temporarily lost track of Titan for about five hours, causing tension among the crew. Discussions took place regarding the need to add such a beacon. On each of Mike Rice's four dives, the submersible also lost contact, which seemed to be a built-in characteristic of the system. Rias reported that locating the Titanic took three hours during one dive, despite landing only 460 meters, 500 yards, from the wreck. Testing and inspection OceanGate claimed on its website in 2023 that the Titan submersible was designed and engineered in collaboration with experts. However, after the disappearance of the Titan, it was revealed that the University of Washington Applied Physics Laboratory had no involvement in the design, engineering, or testing of the submersible. Boeing clarified that they were not a partner in the Titan's design or construction, and NASA stated that while they had a Space Act agreement with OceanGate, they did not conduct testing or manufacturing for the submersible. David Lockridge, the OceanGate Director of Marine Operations, filed a quality control report in January 2018, expressing concerns about the carbon fiber hull of the Titan. He noted that no non-destructive testing had been conducted on the hull, and he felt that relying solely on the acoustic monitoring system was insufficient for detecting potential failures. Lockridge was later dismissed from his position after raising his concerns and refusing to proceed with crude testing without a hull scan. Ocean Gate filed a lawsuit against Lockridge, which was settled in November 2018. Shallow dive testing with a crew was initially conducted in Puget Sound, followed by unmanned testing of the Titan to a depth of 4,000 meters in 2018. In April 2019, a crew of four set a record by descending to a depth of 3,760 meters. Testing was conducted near Great Abaco Island, close to the continental shelf, to minimize the distance needed for towing the platform to depths exceeding 4,600 meters. During a solo descent by Stockton Rush in December 2018, he encountered positive buoyancy issues past 3,000 meters, causing interference with the communication system and resulting in a temporary loss of contact with the surface ship. Rush became the second person to solo dive to 4,000 meters, following James Cameron's dive to Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. Following completion of the tests in January 2020, 
the Titan's hull showed signs of cyclic fatigue and was derated to a depth of 3,000 meters. The composite hull was repaired or replaced by Electro Impact and Janicki Industries in 2020 or 2021 before the submersible's trips to the Titanic. Fiber materials used in the hull were reportedly purchased from Boeing at a discount due to being past their shelf life, although Boeing stated they had no record of selling carbon fiber to OceanGate or Rush. Where is the wreck of the Titanic? The wreck of the Titanic is located at a depth of approximately 12,500 feet, 3,800 meters or 2,100 fathoms, about 370 nautical miles, 690 kilometers, southeast off the coast of Newfoundland. It is divided into two main pieces, with the bow and stern lying about 2,000 feet, 600 meters, apart. The bow is still recognizable and contains many preserved interiors, although it has suffered deterioration and damage upon impact with the sea floor. In contrast, the stern is largely destroyed. Surrounding the wreck, there is a debris field that holds hundreds of thousands of items that were scattered from the ship as it sank. The bodies of the passengers and crew, if not rescued, would have been dispersed across the seabed but have likely been consumed by marine organisms over time. The Titanic sank in 1912 after colliding with an iceberg during its inaugural voyage. Numerous expeditions had previously attempted to locate the wreckage using sonar, but it wasn't until 1985 that the wreck was finally discovered by a joint French-American expedition led by Jean Louis. Michelle of IFREMER and Robert Bullard of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Since its discovery, the Titanic wreck has garnered significant attention and has been visited by numerous tourist and scientific expeditions. The submersible Titan was one of the vehicles used to explore the wreck, but tragically imploded near the site in June 2023, resulting in the loss of all five individuals on board. Over the years, there have been controversial salvage operations that have recovered thousands of items from the Titanic wreck. These items have been conserved and displayed to the public. Various proposals have been put forward to raise the wreck, such as filling it with ping pong balls, injecting it with Vaseline, or encasing it in an iceberg created with liquid nitrogen. However, due to the fragile condition of the wreck and its protected status under a UNESCO convention, raising it is not considered feasible. RMS Titanic Tourism On September 1, 1985, Robert Ballard, with the support of the research vessel Knorr and the submersible Alvin, discovered the wreck of the RMS Titanic. In 1986, Ballard and his team conducted detailed surveys and inspections of the Titanic wreckage using Alvin, Jason Jr. and the support ship. Since then, limited tours of the Titanic wreck have been conducted, including expeditions using Russian Mr. Class submersibles, which were contracted in the 1990s for that purpose, and captured footage used in the opening scenes of the 1997 film. Ocean Gate's Titan submersible has been used for several survey expeditions of the Titanic wreckage site since 2021. The Titan is capable of exploring the debris field and capturing accurate scans for creating a 3D model of the wreck. When OceanGate initially announced its plans for Titanic expeditions in 2017, the first trip was scheduled for 2018, and the price for each tourist seat was set at USD 105,129, adjusted for inflation from the price of the Vanderbilt Suite ticket on the Titanic in 1912. However, Continued testing of the novel hull delayed operations in 2018. By 2019, the ticket price had risen to 125,000, and 54 tourists had signed up for the scheduled voyages, originally planned for June 27. However, permits for the surface support vessel could not be secured, and the plans were further delayed until 2020. The proposed operation initially involved the MEV Havi La Harmony, but it would have violated the Coasting Trade Act in Canada. In January 2020, the original hull was derated to a maximum depth of 3,000 meters due to signs of fatigue, and the COVID-19 pandemic further delayed the procurement of the required carbon fiber filament for building a replacement hull. In November 2020, it was announced that the first voyage to the Titanic would be delayed until May 2021. For the 2021 season, 
OceanGate selected the Canadian flagged a HTS Horizon Arctic as the surface support vessel. The first Titanic survey expedition aboard the Titan was scheduled to start in late June 2021, with the first dive completed in mid-July. A second dive followed in early August, and the Titan returned to Seattle in November. By 2022, the cost of a ticket had doubled to USD 250,000. Horizon Arctic again served as the support vessel for the planned dives. According to OceanGate court filings, 28 persons visited the Titanic on the Titan in 2022, 21 of whom were mission specialists, non-staff passengers. In total, OceanGate undertook six dives to Titanic in 2021 and seven in 2022. For the 2023 survey expedition, OceanGate secured MV Polar Prince as its support vessel, making plans to begin in May. According to Rush, the cost of leasing Horizon Arctic had increased to USD 200,000 per week. The switch to Polar Prince meant the launch and recovery platform would need to be towed to the site rather than carried on board. Challenging weather conditions kept the initial set of dives from occurring in May. In 2019, OceanGate said they were planning to develop the successor Cyclops 3 and Cyclops 4 submersibles with a targeted maximum depth of 6,000 meters, 20,000 feet, and in early 2020, announced that the development and manufacturing of the hulls will be performed at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. The submersibles would be funded through a new round of investments by 100% insiders, totaling USD 18.1 million, as announced in January 2020. NASA's participation was under a Space Act agreement intended to further deep space exploration goals and improve materials and manufacturing for American industry, according to John Vickers. Expeditions to the Titanic Titan made its first dive to the Titanic in July 2021. In total, OceanGate undertook six dives to the Titanic in 2021 and seven in 2022. Each dive typically had a pilot, a guide, and three paying passengers on board. Once inside the submersible, the hatch would be bolted shut and could only be reopened from the outside. The descent from the surface to the Titanic typically took two hours, with the full dive taking about eight hours. Throughout the journey, the submersible was expected to emit a safety ping every 15 minutes to be monitored by the above-water crew. Vessel and surface crew were also able to communicate via short text messages. Customers who traveled to the Titanic with OceanGate, referred to as mission specialists by the company, paid you SD 250,000 each for the eight-day expedition. OceanGate intended to conduct multiple expeditions to the Titanic in 2023, but because of poor weather in Newfoundland, the June expedition in which the Titan was destroyed was the only one the company had launched that year. Safety of the Titan In 2018, OceanGate's Director of Marine Operations, David Lockridge, expressed safety concerns about the Titan submersible. Lockridge composed a report outlining his worries and recommended having the submersible assessed and certified by an agency, but OceanGate declined, citing cost as a reason. He also raised concerns about the certification of the transparent viewport, stating it was only rated for a depth of 1300 M, 4300 FT, not sufficient for reaching the Titanic's depth. Lockridge was also apprehensive about the lack of non-destructive testing on the hull before crude dives, claiming that he was told no scan of the hull could be conducted due to its thickness. OceanGate argued that Lockridge, who was not an engineer, had refused safety approvals from the company's engineering team and asserted that their evaluation of the Titan hull was robust enough, even without third-party assessment. OceanGate filed a lawsuit against Lockridge for breaching his confidentiality contract and making fraudulent statements, while Lockridge countersued, alleging wrongful termination as a whistleblower. The two parties reached a settlement a few months later. In 2018, the Marine Technology Society expressed unanimous concern about the development of Titan and the planned Titanic expedition. They warned about potential negative outcomes and consequences for the industry due to the experimental approach being taken. Jeff Heaton, a signatory of the letter, later revealed that Rush called him after reading it, expressing his belief that industry standards were stifling innovation. In March 2018, deep sea exploration specialist Rob McCollum emailed Rush, advising against using the submersible for commercial purposes without independent testing and classification. 
Rush responded that he was tired of safety arguments being used to hinder innovation and took it as a personal insult. OceanGate's lawyers threatened McCollum with legal action after he sent another email expressing concerns about the potential dangers. In 2022, British actor and television presenter Ross Kemp had planned to record a documentary marking the 110th anniversary of the Titanic sinking, including a dive to the wreckage using the Titan submersible. However, the project was halted as the production company deemed the submersible unsafe and unfit for the purpose, leading to its cancellation. Earlier Incidents In 2022, reporter David Pogue was aboard the surface ship when Titan encountered difficulties and was unable to locate the Titanic during a dive. Pogue's subsequent report for CBS News Sunday morning, which raised questions about Titan's safety, gained significant attention on social media after the submersible lost contact with its support ship in June 2023. During the report, Pogue remarked to Rush that the submersible seemed to have elements of improvisation and makeshift solutions. He highlighted the use of a modified Logitech F710 wireless game controller, worth USD 30, as the means to steer and pitch the submersible and the utilization of construction pipes for ballast. During another dive to the Titanic in 2022, it was discovered that one of the thrusters on Titan had been installed incorrectly causing the submersible to spin in circles when attempting to move forward near the sea floor. As depicted in the BBC documentary Take Me to Titanic, the issue was temporarily resolved by steering the submersible while holding the game controller sideways. According to court filings from November 2022, OceanGate reported that during a 2022 dive, the submersible experienced battery problems and had to be manually attached to a lifting platform, resulting in damage to external components. How the search unfolded The Titan began its two-hour descent to the wreck of the Titanic at a depth of 12,500 feet at around 8 a.m. local time, 1 p.m. UK time, on Sunday 18 June, 9.45 a.m. 5 p.m. UK time, the sub lost contact with its surface vessel. Titan then failed to appear at its scheduled surface time of 3 p.m. 8 p.m. UK time. Search begins. Following the disappearance of the Titan submersible, search and rescue operations involving U.S. and Canadian ships and planes commenced on June 19. As part of these efforts, sonoboys were deployed into the Atlantic Ocean. These specialized devices have the capability to monitor sound at considerable depths, reaching up to approximately 3,900 meters, 13,000 feet. The intention behind deploying sonoboys was to detect any acoustic signals or indications that could lead to locating the missing submersible. The use of sonoboys adds another dimension to the search operation, employing advanced technology to aid in the search and recovery efforts. Banging Noises On June 20, as more information became available regarding the individuals on board the Titan submersible, France announced its commitment to send the vessel Adelant equipped with a deep-sea diving vessel to assist in the search operation. The urgency of the search was underscored by OceanGate Expeditions, the operator of the Titan, who revealed that the submersible had a 96-hour emergency oxygen supply. This information highlighted the limited time frame for potential rescue efforts. There was a glimmer of hope when reports surfaced that sounds had been detected underwater over the course of several hours. However, no official announcement was made regarding the findings, despite some U.S. media outlets beginning to report on the matter. The situation remained uncertain, and the search continued in earnest. The U.S. Coast Guard confirmed on Wednesday, 21 June, that a Canadian P-3 aircraft detected underwater banging noises at 30-minute intervals, but added that the resulting search came back negative. The U.S. Coast Guard U.S. Navy, Canadian Coast Guard, and OceanGate Expeditions established a unified command to oversee search operations, with the French vessel Atalante arriving later in the evening. At least 10 vessels were involved by that point. Bree Discovery By Thursday, June 22 n, the estimated deadline for the Titan's oxygen supply had passed, indicating a critical point in the search and rescue operation. However, the rear admiral in charge of the operation stated that the efforts were still ongoing and that the crews remained hopeful. At this stage, all the vessels involved in the search, including the Atalanchi ship, had arrived at the designated area. 
The Atalante ship brought with it a robot capable of diving to depths of 6,000 meters, 19,600 feet, further enhancing the capabilities of the search operation. With all resources in place, the search continued with determination and the aim of finding any possible signs of the missing submersible and its crew. At around 4.50 p.m. UK time, the U.S. Coast Guard announced that a debris field had been discovered near the Titanic wreck by a remotely operated vehicle, ROV. The information was being evaluated by experts within the Unified Command overseeing the search operation. During a live interview on Sky News, rescue expert David Mearns, who knew two of the men on board, received a WhatsApp message suggesting that parts of the submersible, including the landing frame and rear cover, had been found. Mearns explained that the use of the term debris field indicated that there was no chance of recovering the men alive. He further stated that a debris field implied a breakup of the submersible, likely due to a catastrophic failure such as an implosion. However, he noted that if an implosion had occurred, it would have been instantaneous, and the crew members would not have been aware of what was happening. Later, at around 8 p.m. UK time, OceanGate released a statement expressing their belief that those on board the submersible had sadly been lost. The company expressed grief over the loss of life and gratitude for the efforts of numerous organizations and individuals involved in the search operation. The discovery of the debris field and the subsequent statements from experts in OceanGate painted a grim picture, suggesting that the submersible had suffered a catastrophic failure, resulting in the loss of the crew members' lives. The implosion of the submersible Titan would involve the collapse of its structure due to the immense external pressure exerted by the surrounding water at great depths. To understand this phenomenon, we can look at the basic principles of physics involved. When a vessel like Titan descends to great depths in the ocean, it experiences an increase in hydrostatic pressure. This pressure increases with depth and becomes significant at extreme depths, such as those encountered when exploring the wreckage of the Titanic. The pressure can be several thousand pounds per square inch, psi, or hundreds of times greater than atmospheric pressure at the surface. The structure of the submersible is designed to withstand the pressure differential between the inside and outside of the vessel. However, if the pressure becomes too great, the structural integrity can be compromised, leading to an implosion. The collapse occurs when the external pressure exceeds the structural strength of the submersible, causing it to deform and ultimately collapse inward. The impact of such an implosion on the crew of Titan would be catastrophic. The violent collapse of the vessel would result in extreme compression forces, sudden changes in pressure, and the destruction of the internal space. The crew members would experience intense compression forces on their bodies, potentially leading to severe injuries or even death. The sudden change in pressure could also cause rapid decompression, leading to further injuries. Overall, an implosion of a submersible like Titan due to extreme pressure is a highly dangerous and tragic event. The crew members would face severe physical trauma and would be at a high risk of fatality. After an extensive five-day search, significant parts of the Titan submersible, along with the presumed remains of all five crew members, have been located near the site of the Titanic wreck. The U.S. Coast Guard reported that a remotely operated vehicle, ROV, deployed by the Canadian vessel Horizon Arctic made the breakthrough discovery. The ROV initially spotted the tail cone of the submersible, located around 1,600 feet 500 meters, from the bow of the Titanic wreck. This finding marks a significant development in the search and recovery efforts following the tragic incident involving the Titan. Following the tail cone discovery, the ROV then came across a large debris field nearby, officials said, where the front of the sub's pressure chamber was found. This provided the first indication there was a catastrophic event, said Paul Hankins, Director of Salvage Operations in U.S. Navy. The robot then came across a second, smaller debris field, which contained the other end of the pressurized hold, which Mr. Hankins said basically compromised the totality of that pressure vessel. Officials said Robs would continue to search the area to fully map out what's down there. But they declined to be drawn on the prospects of recovering the bodies of those who died. Rear Admiral John Mauger told reporters that it was an incredibly unforgiving environment and that the debris was consistent with a catastrophic implosion of the vessel. Recovery of the Bodies 
U.S. Coast Guard Rear Admiral John Mauger said on Thursday that he was unsure whether it would be possible to locate the bodies of the five men who died in the Titan submersible. This is an incredibly unforgiving environment, he said, referring to the deep and dangerous underwater area where the submersible disappeared. Those aboard included wealthy British businessmen, Hamish Harding and Shahzad Awud, whose son Suleiman joined them on the Titan. OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush was also part of the crew, along with former French Navy diver Paul Henry Nargelet. It's a tragic situation, and the families of those who died deserve to know what happened and to have closure if possible. What we know about the five men who were aboard the wrecked Titan sub? Hamish Harding. Hamish Harding, who tragically lost his life aboard the Titan submersible, was not only the chairman of Action Aviation, an aviation sales and consulting company, but also known for his adventurous spirit and accomplishments as an explorer. Harding had a passion for exploration, and his achievements include breaking Guinness World Records. In 2019, he set the record for the fastest flight around both the Earth's poles with retired NASA astronaut Terry Virts as a crew member. This feat demonstrated his dedication to pushing the boundaries of exploration and aviation. Additionally, Harding had broken Guinness World Records for other maritime achievements. He held the record for the longest duration at a full ocean depth by a crewed vessel, highlighting his involvement in deep sea exploration. He also set a record for the longest distance traveled along the deepest part of the ocean, further showcasing his commitment to pushing the limits of human exploration. Shahza Dawood Dawood is described as the vice chairman of Engro, a Pakistani energy investment company, as well as the Dawood Hercules Corps, an investment and holdings firm. His expertise spanned mergers and acquisitions in various industries, including textiles, fertilizers, foods, and energy. With his extensive business background, he held positions on several boards, including the SATI Institute, a NASA-funded nonprofit organization focused on extraterrestrial research, and Prince's Trust International, a charity associated with Prince Charles. Dawood's educational background includes an undergraduate law degree and a Master's of Science in Global Textile Marketing from Philadelphia University, which is now known as Thomas Jefferson University. Suleiman Dawood Suleiman, the 19-year-old son of Shahzada Dawood, was a college student who had recently completed his first year as a business major at the University of Strathclyde in Glasgow, Scotland. Stockton Rush Rush, a British businessman and adventurer, founded OceanGate in 2009 and held the position of CEO. His vision was to pioneer the development of advanced submersibles capable of exploring the depths of the ocean, reaching depths of up to 20,000 feet. Recognizing the potential of private industry funding and the use of modern materials, Rush aimed to revolutionize deep-sea exploration while making it more accessible and cost-effective. Prior to his work in ocean exploration, Rush had a diverse background. He achieved the distinction of becoming the youngest jet transport-rated pilot in the world at the age of 19 in 1981, flying to various destinations across the globe. He obtained a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering from Princeton University and a master's degree in business from UC Berkeley. Throughout his career, Rush contributed to the development of sonar systems, software, remote controls, and other technologies through his involvement on boards and development teams of different companies. He also played a role at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, further demonstrating his passion for aviation and exploration. Paul Henry Nargelet Nargelet widely known as Mr. Titanic, was an esteemed figure in the field of deep-sea exploration and renowned for his expertise on the Titanic shipwreck. He began his career in the French Navy, where he served for 22 years and rose to the rank of commander. After retiring from the Navy in 1986, he joined the French Institute for Research and Exploitation of the Sea, where he managed two deep-sea submersibles. In 1987, Nargelet led the first successful recovery dive to the wreckage of the Titanic. This marked the beginning of his extensive involvement with the Titanic exploration and preservation efforts. He served as the Director of Underwater Research for RMS Titanic Inc., a company dedicated to preserving the history of the Titanic, as well as the E-M Group, which focuses on exhibitions and entertainment. Throughout his career, Nargelet completed an impressive 37 dives and submersibles to the Titanic shipwreck. 
Under his supervision, around 5,000 artifacts from the ship, including a 20-ton section of the hull, were retrieved. His deep understanding of the Titanic's history and his commitment to preserving its legacy made him a highly respected figure in the field. Argelette was born in Chamonix, France, and spent 13 years in Africa with his family before returning to France at the age of 16. What the Titan search could cost, and who will pay for it? Norman Palmar, a naval historian, analyst, and author based in Virginia, stated that there is no other comparable ocean search, particularly considering the involvement of numerous countries and even commercial enterprises in recent times. This likely refers to large-scale search operations for missing aircraft or vessels in the ocean. The cost of conducting such searches can be significant. According to the Government Accountability Office, the hourly cost of operating aircraft involved in these searches, such as the turboprop P-3 Orion, jet-powered P-8 Poseidon Subhunters, and C-130 Hercules, is estimated to be in the tens of thousands of dollars. These costs include factors like fuel, maintenance, personnel, and other operational expenses. Complete costs of ocean search operations can indeed be challenging to determine as they depend on various factors and may involve multiple entities. In some cases, private companies and research vessels equipped with remote operated vehicles, ROVs, are engaged in the search efforts, as was the case with the discovery of the Titan. Regarding the payment for these services, it is uncertain who will ultimately bear the costs. If government had entered into contracts with these entities, particularly if they fall under the purview of the Defense Department, there is a possibility that the government might assume the financial responsibility. However, without specific information about the contractual agreements or funding arrangements, it is difficult to ascertain with certainty how the costs will be allocated and paid. How much will U.S. Coast Guard charge for the search and rescue efforts? According to Business Insider, Rear Admiral John Mauger, a top official of the U.S. Coast Guard, stated that the Coast Guard does not associate a cost with human life when it comes to search and rescue efforts. Mauger emphasized that the Coast Guard does not charge for search and rescue operations as a matter of U.S. law and Coast Guard policy. He highlighted that the Coast Guard is always ready to answer the call for help, even in cases where individuals put themselves at risk due to inadequate safety gear, lack of training, or being under the influence of substances. Auger acknowledged that the ocean can be a dangerous and unforgiving environment, with risks present every weekend. Nevertheless, the Coast Guard remains committed to conducting disciplined operations, taking warranted risks, and deploying resources to save lives. He expressed the Coast Guard's dedication to their mission of rescuing individuals in distress, emphasizing that it is part of their identity and who they are as an organization. Investigations On 23 June, both Canada and the United States announced that they were launching investigations into the incident. The United States investigation will involve the National Transportation Safety Board and the Coast Guard, the latter of which will take the lead because it declared the incident a major marine casualty. The Canadian Transportation Safety Board announced that it had launched an investigation into the incident as Titan's support vessel, MV Polar Prince, is a Canadian flagged ship. A team of TSB investigators headed to St. John's, Newfoundland, from where the journey began, to gather information, conduct interviews, and assess the occurrence with other agencies also expected to be involved. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police also announced that it was performing a preliminary examination of the incident in order to determine whether to launch a full investigation. Reactions The disappearance of Titan and the subsequent search and rescue efforts garnered significant attention and sparked discussions across various fronts. Cian Leet, co-founder and chair of Horizon Maritime Services, praised the scale and efficiency of the search and rescue response, highlighting the quick mobilization of equipment and the involvement of multiple organizations, including the U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. military, and various companies. Lucy Kosnett, the cousin and goddaughter of Hamish Harding, one of the men on board, has expressed concerns about the incident suggesting that more safety checks should have been conducted and that the company, OceanGate, should have taken additional measures to ensure the crew's safety. Lucy emphasized the importance of a comprehensive investigation to determine the cause of the incident and prevent similar accidents in the future. Dr. Alan Estrada, who reportedly took a trip on the Titan submersible last year, shared his experience of encountering communication and power issues during the dive. 
According to a YouTube video and reported by the Daily Mail, Estrada stated that the submersible lost communication with its support ship for two hours, and the energy source unexpectedly lost power, resulting in a shortened time at the Titanic shipwreck. Estrada mentioned that he was aware of the risks involved in the dive before undertaking it. Estrada expressed concerns about the potential risk to his life, but acknowledged that he and other passengers were aware of the risks they were taking. He stated that the risks were not a surprise to them. It is worth noting that Estrada's experience is not unique, as other passengers have also raised concerns about communication issues during their dives with the Titan submersible. Mike Reyes, who had taken four dives with Ocean Gate's Titan, shared that he experienced communication issues, but attributed them more to the challenges of deep water exploration rather than solely blaming the submersible itself. These accounts highlight some of the safety concerns and challenges faced by passengers during their dives with the Titan submersible. OceanGate, the company behind the submersible, has faced scrutiny over safety concerns in the past. Park Stevenson, director of the USS Kidd Veterans Museum and Titanic researcher, expressed concern about the loss of communication with Titan and emphasized the need for serious consideration given the unusual circumstances. Stevenson, with his experience in deep-sea explorations and previous dives to view the Titanic, added credibility to the discussion. Criticism arose regarding the disparity in the search-and-rescue efforts and media coverage compared to another recent maritime disaster, the Mycenae migrant boat sinking. The cost of the search for Titan was questioned, as it likely involved significant public funds. The comparison between the two incidents drew attention and Pakistani internet users specifically highlighted the victims in both cases. The incident surrounding Titan gained traction on social media, leading to the creation of internet memes that ridiculed the submersible's construction, Ocean Gate's safety record, and even the victims. Some video game enthusiasts even recreated Titan as a playable vehicle in Grand Theft Auto V and developed interactive multiplayer games on platforms like Roblox. These memes and recreations face criticism for their insensitivity, with concerns raised about the timing and appropriateness of joking about such a tragedy. James Cameron, the director of the 1997 film Titanic and a frequent visitor to the wreckage site, drew parallels between the implosion of Titan and the events leading to the Titanic disaster. He criticized the choice of carbon fiber composite construction for the pressure vessel and questioned the effectiveness of real-time hole monitoring as a preventive measure. The incident and its aftermath highlighted the complex dynamics of public reaction, including a mix of mourning, criticism, insensitivity, and social commentary. The broader context of extreme expeditions carried out by billionaires with their own companies, as well as internet culture, and the attitudes towards wealth and privilege played a role in shaping the diverse responses to the incident. 